Last night in the 128-123 win over the Grizzlies, LeBron dropped 35 points, 14 assists, 12 rebounds, breaking his own record to become the oldest player in NBA history with three straight triple doubles. Lakers are perfect 6-0 at home, their best home start since 2010-2011, currently sitting sixth in the West. They're there largely thanks to the play of Anthony Davis, who's second in the league in scoring, and LeBron, who, like I said, has recorded three straight triple doubles. All right, do we have Shams in the building, Stephen A.? That's right. Yep, yes, more he is. friends right in the studio, there. and I'm just yeah. out here chilling by myself Man. in these New York City streets. It's messed up, guys. Mm. Hi, Shams. Right. Thanks for being with us. Uh, Stephen A., I'll start with you, and then, Shams, you can counterpunch here. How far can LeBron carry the Lakers? Um, I think that, well, LeBron is phenomenal. Um, I think it's a damn shame that he's approaching 40 years of age and he's still in better shape than 95% of the league. That makes no sense to me. Uh, but his greatness cannot be questioned. He needs Anthony Davis. But if Anthony Davis continues to play the way that he's playing and LeBron plays the way that he's been playing, oh, the Lakers go to the conference finals. I think, I think they have that potential. There's no question in my mind about that. But it would take that because I don't know how much faith we should have in the rest of the parts around them. But LeBron has been absolutely sensational, particularly at home, the way that they've been playing right now, winning, you know, the games that they've won um, at the Crypto.com Arena. But it would take that sustained level of greatness in the postseason I'm talking about, Shams, along with Anthony Davis for him to go to the conference finals. But if both of them are on their A game, yeah, they could pull that off. If both of them are on their A game, and if they're healthy, this team has a chance 1,000%. We're never going to see. Has a chance for what? For, to compete okay. for a championship. Okay. When you think about they made the Western Conference Finals a couple years ago. We know they won a championship together as a duo in the bubble that, that first year that LeBron was in L.A. We're never going to see this again. Stephen A., this man is about to be 40 years old next mm -hmm. month. His best three-point percentage of mm -hmm. his career, his best free throw percentage of his career. He's got the, the second most assists of his career, and that's with the lowest usage rating of his career, and that's because he's having to, to be around the orbit of Anthony Davis, and that's why when they brought in J.J. Redick, everyone made that a LeBron James hire, and of course, that podcast didn't hurt, but... Everything was centered around Anthony Davis and how would he fit into J.J. Redick's offense. And he is at the orbit of everything. And LeBron James is finding ways around that. And I found it interesting this week. He said he's not going to play until the wheels fall off, right? And my sense is next season could potentially be his last season in the NBA. Now, could he play another season after that, 20, 26, right. 27, potentially? Bryce James, his, mm -hmm. his youngest son, class of 2025. Maybe Bryce James keeps him around mm -hmm. an extra year or two. But I do think next season, All-Star Game in L.A., th there might be some, some good momentum uh, there for that. But I think for now, this team, the way they're constructed, they need Jared Vanderbilt back. They're hopeful he's going to be back at some point right. soon. And they do have two well, first-round picks they can trade, too. So. That's fine. They, I don't know if they need to trade first-round picks because it depends on what you can get for them. That's number one. Number two, uh, if you're Jared Vanderbilt and you're listening, remember when Anthony Edwards called you out and said, you've been sitting down for two years, my brother. At some point, you are an NBA player. When are we going to see you? I mean, damn. Get, 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 get healthy. Figure it out. Find a way. Number three, J.J. Redick. I love the fact that he sat D'Angelo Russell and brought in Cam Reddish. If you've noticed... Since he has done that, LeBron James' game has elevated based on what we were seeing earlier parts along with what we have seen ever since then. He's had a triple-double in every game since Cam Reddish has been the guy in there. I'm watching that. Because if Cam Reddish can give you anything, because coming out of Duke, I expected a lot more from him. I thought that when, you know, as he traveled, we know he's, he's got the size on him and he can shoot. If this brother's going to go and he's going to be formidable – that helps the Lakers as well because we didn't anticipate seeing that, Shams. But I like what I'm seeing with that. And I like the fact that J.J. Reddick made that move. And last season when they pulled D'Angelo Russell from the starting lineup, there was so much angst around this organization, they put him back in. Mm -hmm. I think J.J. Reddick, the way he's operating, he's sticking to his guns. He's sticking to his principles. He feels like this is the best approach for this team moving forward. And I don't think he's one that's going to sway. This is someone that has brought a lot of accountability there. He's broken a lot of clipboards so far in training camp in, <laughs> in, in, in preseason. He is someone that he's, he's going to stick to his guns. And this is what he feels strongly about. I love Dalton Connect. I love that man coming out of Tennessee. I watched him in the NCAA tournament. I knew that he was somebody. I love the fact that the Lakers got their hands on him. That yeah. was great. I love the attention to detail that J.J. Redick is, is, is displaying and the fact that he's going to hold cats accountable. 
What I don't expect is for LeBron James to continue to shoot 46% from three-point range. We know that's not going to let him. Now, stop that now. As great as he is, 40, we know, 40, 41, 40, 42. I said 46. I'm it's going to drop. I, I, damn sure. right it's going to fall. It's definitely sure. going to drop. That's high. We that's know high, that's, yeah, yeah. We know okay, that's not going to continue. Okay, you pessimist. Let's go to the east. I'm not being a pessimist. JJ's my I'm guy. I'm not being a pessimist. I mean, a little right. bit. You are, but that's okay. Right. Do you feel like it's too early to say the Sixers are in trouble? No, it's not too early to say they're in trouble because they're in trouble because they're injured. And if you're injured this early, why would we believe that you're going to be healthy? Think about it. Tyrese Maxey uh, is, is definitely a star for this team. Paul George is your third option. We know what he's capable of when he's on the basketball court. He showed us the other night when he had 29 and 10. But in the end, this comes down to Embiid. If Joel Embiid is on the court and healthy, the Sixers can beat anybody. If Joel Embiid is not on the court, the Sixers can lose to anybody. It's just that drastic of a discrepancy. And so, for me, to look at Joel Embiid and to look at Paul George and to see how important those two components are, but knowing their history of injuries is what it is. And then you see a Cleveland team, not just gifted, but young. The Boston Celtics, not just champions, but young. The two faces of your franchise are 28 and 27, or about to be 27 respectively, in, in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, and not necessarily in that order. I'm just looking at it from that standpoint. The Knicks, you got Carl Anthony Towns down out there dropping 46. You know, you know eventually the Knicks going to get their stuff together offensively as well. I just think that the Sixers are in a bad spot right now because they were, they're relying on experience, age, and, and, and praying for health more so than anything else. That's hard to have faith in. They, they need these three guys to get back on the court. And I think Friday for Tyrese Maxey, hopefully doing more on the court. Right. Uh, they need him back in the lineup, of course. But he's got to take time. He's got, yes, he's got a hamstring injury. You have two guys dealing with knee injuries. It's to your point, the health is the ma major thing. And you have two guys sitting the back-to-back. -back. Medically, they're not mm -hmm. cleared yet to That's play back-to-backs. Right. The, the league, the Sixers, they all know mm -hmm. it. And so, from a medical perspective, getting them on the floor, and I've talked to people around Joel Embiid in the last few days, he knows the urgency is there. Those three guys need to get on the court. They need to prove that they can play with each other and build that chemistry. The interesting thing, Molly, that everybody yeah. needs to watch out for when it comes to the Philadelphia 76ers, you watched when Joel Embiid came on the court the other night and hit two or 13 shots. Everybody was looking at it offensively. Look at the lapses that took place defensively. He couldn't guard anybody. He was scared to move. If you're Cleveland, if you're Boston, you're launching Timid. threes, but Timid you're injury. also pushing pace. So as a result of that, what are you doing? You're going to make the Sixers run. What's the, two, the, what's the biggest problem for Joel Embiid and Paul George? Making them run. That's a problem. If teams are going to make you run, that ain't going to help your knees. Take it from me. It ain't going to work. He needs to get in basketball shape, but the only way you get into basketball shape is by playing basketball. I and I think that is what we're going to see over the next few weeks if he yeah. can stay on the floor. Yes. Mm. How about so get on the floor? Shams, you're get a West Coast guy. Is, do you live in L.A.? Is that the deal, why, why we see you from don't, L.A.? Don't answer that question. Molly, don't let I'm, her know where you live. Don't let Molly, her know where you live. I'm a, I will say, I'll stick up. I'm a Midwest guy, Molly. I'm a Midwest guy. You know what? Guy. Midwest, they're good people. Midwest and the South. Us saying. in the tri-state area. Come on we're, now. We're, 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 dear, we're suspect. All right. Well, we hope Abby, to see you in New York City soon. We appreciate your breakdown. We appreciate dear your Abby, breakdown, no dear one Abby. even gets that reference, because, because, Stephen A. Molly, I'm I mean, better, I do, sadly. I'm better yeah. being around you today, even though you're not in my physical presence today. Thank oh, you.